You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Tuesday, the 9th of May, 2017. We see that stocks are mixed, gold and bonds are down for the day on Monday as we go into Tuesday, the 9th. We will start first with the S&P 500 as depicted by the ETF SPY. We are in a current downtrend on our weekly chart that may be coming to an end. It started back on the 31st of March. It lasted for several weeks, and we did very well with that. And then we saw the two-day crossover going up. Hasn't been strong enough yet to pull the weekly over, but starting on the two-day chart ending on the 27th of April, we had a confirmed up move. Now, again, we don't trade until we have the weekly moving in the same direction as the two-day. It is not safe to do that, but we do have that confirmed. We continue to see up movement. Let's see, we're going on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so about 14 days of up movement. We have the derivative oscillator is positive along with the PPO, the price percent oscillator. And if indeed we do see that weekly vertical crossover occur, it hasn't yet. Like I said, we're still in a confirmed down move since the 31st of March, but it does appear to be getting closer and closer. If that happens by the end of the week, then of course we will call it for the day, like we said, down just a little bit, 0.01%. Now, as we focus in, let's look at the four-hour chart and sort of see where we are. Been sliding sideways since about the 26th of April, and we finally seen some up movement over the last day and a half or so. So again, we're above the two-day trend line, and we're slowly moving. Actually, we still haven't closed above the highest point all the way back on the afternoon of the 26th of April. So we're continuing to see if there's going to be a breakout. Four-hour chart is trying to cross over going up, has not managed to do that since it crossed over going down on the 3rd of May. So just pay attention don't know if these charts are topping out or not. There may be enough power to rotate over that weekly chart going up. We will just continue to monitor it. We will keep you posted if you're not already signed up for our text alert service for those powerful weekly vertical crossovers. You can be by just simply texting to the number 33222 the word charting wealth. That's our name. Now, let's keep moving through these charts. Next, we go to the Qs, which is, of course, the NASDAQ 100, as depicted by QQQ, also called the Cubes by some folks, up 0.22% for the day. We had a switchback occur, if you remember. That weekly chart crossed over going down. Doesn't happen a lot, but it was short-lived back on the 13th of April, and then it crossed back over two weeks later, going up on the 28th of April, and we've seen considerable up movement. We also saw that two-day chart cross back over going up. That occurred on the 27th, right before the weekly vertical crossover reasserted itself. And of course, we jumped in that following Monday as per the text messaging we sent out to everyone when that weekly vertical crossover occurred. We jumped in at 1030 a.m. and we have seen nice price appreciation since then. So again, that's what those weekly vertical crossovers are all about, giving you a heads up on some confirmed trending price movement. And that's what we are all about. We're about following trends, not forecasting, but finding trends that have established themselves and then jumping into them. Okay, let's continue to move through these charts. Again, we are currently in that play on the queues. What's going on on TLT? Well, TLT is the 20-year bond fund. Remember, we have an, a confirmed up move on that chart all the way back from the 3rd of February. The market went up for a few days and then slid down for a, a couple of weeks and then slid down and then started really powering up on the 24th of March, moved up for several weeks until it topped out on the 21st of April, then started moving over. We had that confirmed crossover going down on the two-day chart for the two-day chart ending on Monday, the 1st of 
May. And of course, we've continued to see strong down movement since then, breached the weekly trend line uh, several days ago, and we just continue to see that downward march. We, of course, are waiting to see if and when we have a crossover going down. And again, you know, bonds are trying their best to hold that energy and not move over going down. Why? Because the market appears to be trying its best to top out. And we shall see how the struggle goes. If indeed the market does roll over, then of course you can expect TLT to bounce back strongly due to the inverse correlation between bonds and stocks. What's that all about? Well, typically, if the stock market's doing good, money flows from bonds into stocks. If stock market's doing bad, the opposite occurs. So we're continuing to struggle. We saw things hit a bottom all the way back on uh, in like mid-December. That is where things started to try to move over. Of course, we had that weekly vertical crossover in early, G in early February, and we've just continued to watch bonds struggle with the market, and we'll continue to pay attention to that. But with the, the way that things are currently going with that two-day crossover going down, we're not calling anything in a bond fund right now. We are just waiting to see what's going to win out. Is the two-day chart going to be strong enough to pull the weekly over? Or have we found a bottom and are things going to rotate back over? We'll keep waiting. If this two-day chart rotates back over going up, we will be jumping back into bonds. Now, let's go to gold and see what's going on. Gold's currently in a confirmed up move on that weekly chart. And the two-day chart rotated over going down confirmed weekly, a confirmed two-day crossover going down back on the two-day chart ending on the 24th of April. We've had a lot of strong down moves in gold. And of course, we can see with every passing day and down move, we're getting closer and closer to a weekly vertical crossover going down on gold. Again, it tends to many times be inversely related to stocks. So we'll see if indeed that occurs. Derivative oscillators also lost, lost a lot of energy. If indeed that does occur, we will call it and we will let everyone know at the end of the week if and when that happens. So again, keep your eye on gold. Keep your eye on bonds. We are waiting to see what's going to happen with the S&P 500. And of course, we continue to be into our up move on the queues and making virtual dollars there. Thanks so much, my friends. God bless. Hope you are doing well. Follow these charts with us every day. We love to hear from you. You can write us CW at chartingwealth.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Subscribe to that YouTube channel. You want to really help us out, go to iTunes, subscribe. Give us a five-star rating. Say something nice about us. And again, sign up for that tech service. When you do sign up for our emails that you can do at chartingwealth.com, we will send you every day the video podcast that we do, a link to it, along with all of the information that comes in our show notes in that email. You will get our How to Read a Stock Chart video, a link to that. You'll get a link to our trade worksheet, our daily market worksheet, our weekly market worksheet, and the layout that we use at freestockcharts.com. All of that is provided to you at no cost. God bless. Take care, my friends, from chartingwealth.com.